about the writing process and how that helped you process your grief and what motivated you to want to write about this. Yeah, so I would say the three things that four things got me through exercise, reading, my dogs, and and writing. So you know how like there's that Winston Churchill saying, if you're going through hell, keep going. I would yeah, change yeah. it. I would change it and I would say, if you're going through hell, keep going, but bring a dog with you because that is <laughs> the quickest route out of hell. Um, yeah, my dogs are amazing. But yeah, I've always been a journal writer. Um, again, discovered by accident, didn't know that there's science behind the actual uh, act of, of writing as therapy, as sort of just working things out with yourself. I, I just, I've been doing it since I was in college. I've got books all over the place with like nonsense about losing the last five pounds and like the last heartbreak and things like that. So, um, <laughs> but I, I write after, because I'm a writer, um, at least I was for myself, right after Felipe died, it took a full month for me to really be able to sit down and process because it was so painful, but I just started little by little writing about it. And that little by little turned into volumes, you know, of, of um, memories and also feelings. And that really was the outline for a book. And the reason why I decided to start writing a memoir is because um, I've, I turned to other people's stories about grief to get through grief. So if I can contribute to that volume of work, then I'm doing exactly what was done for me to help me. And it's sort of like a paying it forward. Uh, and you know, everyone's grief story is unique. So I was really looking for someone who lost a love, like a partner, who lost a partner young and who lost a partner young while not having a community and while going through the trauma of PTSD. That's a lot, right? Like that's, a, that's like a, that's a, a weird, and it's hard to find that exact story. And I'm not sure that it yeah. exists out there. There is one book called Wave by a woman who lost her entire family to the tsunami in Sri Lanka in 2004, I think it was. So she might be the only other, um, but she had a family and she had a community. Um, I didn't really. So that's what I was looking for. And so that's what I'm writing, right? So that if anyone else has to go through this, maybe another foreign service officer, God forbid, in the future does, right? And so um, that's why I did this, to, to write about it within this lifestyle and to write about it a, not just a loss, but a loss with the trauma of finding your loved one while you're doing this alone um, and getting through it alone. And that's why I'm doing it. And um, it's been an interesting experience. So I, I have a manuscript and um, I've sent it to a few agents and I definitely have some editing to do yet. So it might be another year or two before it actually sees the light of day, but I'm working on it. And so, yeah, and it's been very healing. It's been, a, it's been interesting to see my development as a griever through the process. How do you mean? Because I see now that I can revisit the day that this happened, the day that I found Felipe and I can revisit it without the trauma. There was a time when I couldn't do that, you know, when every time I thought about him and finding him and touching him, the trauma would come back. I would feel the response in my body, you know, I'd feel yeah. the adrenaline and the emotion and the endorphins and like, well, you know, everything that goes with it because of the PTSD. And I can go back and read it and I don't feel it anymore. So I see mm -hmm. that I've healed in some ways, but as I'd mentioned, you know, I'm still not over that funeral scene. So I still have some work to do, definitely.